everybody. Welcome to, uh, we are on LinkedIn Live and then we're also on YouTube. So if you want to check us out, you certainly can. I'm Meredith Grundy with Meredith Grundy Coaching and I'm delighted to be here with Carol Banks of Carol Banks Design, where we are co-sponsoring these Tuesday musings that we do once a month, every third Tuesday of the month. And today we get Asker Lindholt with us, PhD. I told him I would dance that out. PhD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what I love, so I have had the honor to be on a LinkedIn Live with Asker. And I was, of course, like, you know, to me these days, it's all about lifting each other up. And we both are public speaking coaches. And the beautiful thing about having more than one brain in the room is that you get a lot of amazing wisdom. And so I'm hoping that for today's conversation that you get a lot of amazing wisdom between myself and Asger and Carol that will help you with your public speaking and presentation skills. And today we are going to specifically talk about public speaking and the fear of public speaking, because let's just say that's real, right? Am I right? It is real. It's definitely real. A lot of people trying to tell us this is not real. You cannot die from public speaking. And I think that's obviously true. I've never heard of anybody dying from giving a speech, but there is fear related to it. Let's, let's be honest. There's a social fear. If you go out and, and make a killer speech and really do well, you're obviously going to move up the hierarchy. On the other hand, if you really bomb time after time, you're probably not going to be the one that's being invited to make a presentation for a big client. And it's also going to be hard for you to attract your own clients if you have your own company. So there is a lot at stake. Sure, you're going to survive. But at the end of the day, hopefully you want to do more than just survive. So right. I think the first step is really realizing it's real. It is. It is yeah. real. And so I'm curious because you know they often say you hear those things like people would rather get mauled by a bear than give us a, a talk or there's there's all these things that people would rather do than actually yeah. stand up on stage and give a talk and for me i've been doing a lot of um work with my particular clients on belief system right mm -hmm. and so i'm curious about when somebody comes to you and they're like, I am so fearful of this, or I have been, like you said, bombing one presentation after the next, and I really need to level up in my, to, to be seen in my career as an expert. Um, what, what is an entrance point for you with your clients and how do you serve them in that way? Yeah. So a lot of things I think come from our childhood. So what I'm all about is discovering the root cause. Mm -hmm. Why are you feeling like this? because there's a reason why that person feels like that. Personally, it took me quite a while to discover why I did have a lot of fear on stage. And once I discovered it, it really helped me a lot. So really diving into the root cause, it could be things like your upbringing, your childhood, maybe you got a, pra a praise for certain things, like you were really good. And then maybe you think you need to be the best on stage in order to get praise. It could be other things. Um, maybe you have a mindset that you don't really believe you can learn this. And then we can talk about, you know, this is a skill that is a learnable. Everybody can learn the skill. Uh, I don't think anybody's born an amazing storyteller or a speaker. Some people might seem like they have a natural gift for it. Mm -hmm. But when you go further behind the scenes and really discover things, there's always a reason why they were good. Maybe they were brought up in a family where the parents read lots of stories and maybe they did theater when they were small and, and, and kind of got that in uh, that way. So there's usually a reason behind why people are good at things. We might not know why. And it just seems like, Hey, this guy is born to be on stage. Um, but, but yeah, you know, diving into that and convincing them that this can be learned uh, as well. So really, you know, having a conversation and see where, Oh, here's some pain here's some trouble. Um, you know, I think that's what it's all about. Yeah. Is there and, some, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead, Carol, please. Is there something, um, that's consistent that you see with people and their upbringing or is each case unique as far as why people are, uh, fearful of public speaking? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think many times it could be, fairly similar, uh, mm -hmm. some upbringings. Uh, there's a lot at stake, like we talked about. And obviously if there's a lot at stake, we tend to be more nervous. So those could be certain things. And I think there's a big myth out there that either you are good on stage or you're not. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. this is the big myth that we tend to 
we have to bust. And really, honestly, most people aren't very good when they start out. It's typically fairly boring. It's not really inspirational. So a lot of people get, you know, feel they get some setbacks. And for me, it's a lot about working with the process. So really saying to them, maybe the first 50 times or at least 20 times, it's all about discovering kind of, you know, being fairly comfortable on stage. Maybe that's your goal for the first 20 speeches. But like, oh, I thought, you know, I'd do two or three. But right. usually it takes a bit more practice. And I know on the stage, you guys actually practice it a lot in high school, whereas in the rest of the world, most people actually don't get training for this. Yeah. When I grew up, my first nine years in public school, no training whatsoever. I went to high school for three years here in Denmark, no training. I think I did probably two presentations at university. I think I did two presentations, my math thesis and one other. And that's pretty much it. And if you don't practice it, you're not going to be good. And I remember when I was, uh, you, you mentioned I was a PhD. And when I went to conferences, I would see the people from the U United States that would typically be better because hmm. Hmm. I think they have trained more. Isn't that right? It's well, I don't know. That's curricula. debatable. It's debatable okay. I, because I don't, I, you know, I grew up in the theater, as you know, and so mm -hmm. I got that sure. training to be on stage, but I have had like, a, there's a lot of doctors, um, biologists, so forth that there's some industries, architects, for example, who have to be pr able to present their designs um, that aren't actually receiving robust training. And I think what you hit upon, Asker, that I think is important is that it's a process right? Yeah. That it's not a quick fix and that you're not going to just over be an overnight a success because you took one right. public speaking course and that it, and so I do feel that that's the fundamental issue there is that people have an, a, a misunderstanding of what the process is going to look like and how much work it actually takes to get good at it and to build that confidence that we're talking about and to get overcome that fear yeah. And I, I'm curious to ask her if you don't mind to talk about, so fear can come in many different forms and it can arise at, at unexpected times. Like you could even be the most practiced, most brilliant speaker. Uh, and yet fear arises in the form of anxiety or nerves start to get the best mm -hmm. of you. So I'm curious what you can talk. Uh, can you talk into what do you, how, what do you think, uh, is helpful for people when those moments arise? What, what would you, what advice would you give to help people out? Yeah. What, one of the best advice I think I can give people is once it comes really just accept it's there, mm. you know, every feeling we have is there for a reason. It might not serve us, uh, but it's there for a reason. It has a pers uh, positive benefit. Now it might have 10 negative, uh, outcomes as well, but there's a reason why we're having a feeling. So really try to recognize that feeling and think about, okay, what's trying to do. So maybe the feeling is sit down, don't get up on stage because you avoid humiliating yourself. You're running a risk by going up there. But on the other hand, you know, you can intellectually think about it. Hey, there is so much more to win. And as you say, it's a process. Okay. Maybe this speech is not going to be the speech where I get, you know, loads of clients uh, waiting in line to sign up for my program. But if you don't do that talk, you're not going to have it 50 or 100 talks later. So um, I think really just accepting it and instead of running away from it. And there are so many people, you know, in other kinds of areas in life, if they go out and they want to meet somebody, you know, they have to drink so much alcohol, you right. know, or I mean, think about it. Why would that be necessary? Why not rather just kind of learn the skill to open a conversation and do your thing? Or why do you have to overeat instead of just realizing what is it I'm trying to run away from? And then mm. once you have that, that's a really good point. So when the fear comes to me, I always look at it like, okay, here you are again. You're trying to help me. You want to do something good for me. I know what it is, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I love so I that. I talk to my fear. Make friends with really, your fear. Yeah, because you cannot run away from it. If you mm -hmm. try to run, because I've done that, trying to run away from it, you might escape it for a little bit, but you're never ever going to get rid of it. It's right. like you, you escape it for 30 seconds, a minute, but it's going to haunt you down all the time. If you hug it, you give it love, passion, and, and really care about it, it's going to be minimized. 
And I think, you know, we, we know this from our everyday life. If you're having a conversation with somebody that's just listening, they might not be giving you any good advice or anything, just listening to your troubles and, and those sort of things. I'm like, hi, man, I'm feeling a lot better. And all they did was listen. But the funny thing is, I think you also listened to it yourself. And that mm-hmm. calmed you down. You mm-hmm. got more in touch with that feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love Okay, I want to back up a little bit because you did something where you you brought up alcohol. And I want to mm. talk about that a little bit too, because we do these self-soothing things because we don't want to step into the fear. We don't want to be friends with the fear. And yeah. so that I want to talk about that a little bit too, because you you didn't say it, but it's the one-on-one, right? We don't always have to be up on stage. Public speaking is also about networking. Yeah. It's about day-to-day life, how you interact with new humans and the listening piece of it. So I feel like what I heard in there is in that moment where you're feeling the fear, it's about building a mindset over time where you can go in that moment rather than reaching for the drink to calm your nerves. Hey, Meredith, why are you reaching for a drink? What are you feeling? Where are you feeling it in your body? Can you breathe into that? How do you manage that? And then you can make a choice. But if you don't train yourself, if you're not mindful, then it's going to be very challenging to not be impulsive. Yeah, I think you're very right about that. You know, getting clear on your process and having a choice. I've got no problem with people going out and having a drink. Oh, heck no. Of course, you know, (laughs) of course I do that. I mean, I try to do that every now and then. So, uh, but, but, you know, yeah, getting clear on the process and really going deep. And discovering the root cause, I think that is going to help uh, people a lot. Another thing, advice I would give, you know, just try to slowly get out of your comfort zone. Do something that's slightly scary. This is Mm -hmm. what the psychologist is saying. You know, don't jump on a stage with a thousand people. If you are really scared to speak to five people, you know, then start with five or seven and kind of work your way up. Um, and some people are different. They don't, they don't mind a thousand, but five, Hey man, I can see them. So everybody's different, but right. uh, try to do something that scares you a little bit and push outside and do it a lot. That, this is what the research shows. You get over things you're afraid of. If you do it a lot, yeah. you could do therapy, you could do it a lot, or you could have some sort of trauma, but this is usually at a negative event. Mm-hmm. Let's say you have a, you know, if you go to war and you see some, you know, uh, ugly images that can change your life, just that one image. But if we're talking about having a positive change, you know, repetition and and coaching, this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank you for that. Um, Carol, do you have any questions? I see you kind of nodding your head (laughs) and and doing, yes. I had one question um, just for myself. Um, As far as presenting, I'm usually not that nervous, but what I'm nervous for is that uh, one-on-one where someone's asking you a question and I'm always nervous that I'm never going to have the answer. Like, is there a way to prepare for that besides like just that you are an expert in your field and so you should know those things or how can you prepare for possible questions coming at you where you want to answer and sound like you know what you're yeah. talking about? <laughs> that, that's a great question. I mean, certainly these are things we can't really prepare because probably if it was a really important thing, you would probably have put that in your talk. So it's something you haven't really seen come or maybe you didn't have time to cover it. So the first thing I think is really acknowledging this is a great question. If you do that, people will be like, Hey man, this is awesome. You know, he's on my side. So you really want to have that positive vibe with the audience or if it's a one-on-one great question. And I think we have to realize, sure, we are experts. It doesn't mean we know everything. There's oh, always yeah. going to be someone that's better, or you can say, you know what? Um, these are my experiences, but I've only had a few, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not solid. Is, I haven't had hundreds of clients with this issue. Maybe I had two, like, okay, I can share that. But just being upfront and saying, hey, this is what I think, or you can say, I don't really have an answer right off the bat, but I'm pretty sure I could give you a good answer. I'll go home and look at my books, resources or whatever, you know, just being upfront, people are going to be like, Hey, this is awesome that you are not trying to show that, you know, everything. I mean, hopefully you've done a good talk where people saw loads of value. And then, um, I think that that's, that's, that's the way to do it. Really just recognizing we don't have to know everything. There are certain things I don't know. Uh, that's okay. I'm trying to learn it, but it's okay. 
Yeah, I, no, I, I don't know not. if that's helpful for you. Just having that humbleness and be like, I, I don't need to know everything. I'm giving yeah. my my best. And yeah. Yeah, yeah allowing like, yourself to be a little vulnerable, I yeah. think is okay, right. for sure. Yeah. We do have a question here uh, from Marion. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, can you speak to how some people struggle with speaking in front of people they know, like coworkers, family and friends, et cetera? And what are some ways to overcome that challenge? So speak to people you know, yeah. coworkers. Yeah. The first thing that popped yeah. in my head with that question yeah. was like when I was on stage as an actor mm. and I knew the people in the audience, like I knew the cat that there was this particular casting director. I knew my mom was there. Or I knew I knew that like the 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 critic was there. Like there would be something psychologically that would happen to me that was different than if I if I was just speaking to an audience of people that I didn't know, because I was like, well, I, yeah, I don't know you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right? I can totally relate to that, Mary. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I don't show my mom all my videos, uh, but she, she sneaks up upon me every now and then like, ah, you know, I feel slightly embarrassed uh, about the stuff I talk about. But um, I think it's all about starting from what is the value you're giving. You're sitting down and saying, I think my coworkers are challenged this way. Mm -hmm. I happen to have studied this area quite a bit. So I want to share this with them, how they can then overcome a challenge, save time, whatever it is. So think about you're delivering some value. Mm -hmm. And then obviously you have to find the point, how deep you want to go in terms of sharing vulnerable, vulnerable stories. You know, if, if your mom's in the audience, maybe you don't want to I don't know, share your high school love or whatever it is, uh, but you find, you know, whatever is comfortable for you and maybe step a little bit outside of like we talked about, but recognize that you're giving value and then that's what we're doing. You know, I, we're helping yeah. Yeah. I love that. I, I I really appreciate that asker. And I, and I'm just going to add one more thing to what you just said too, which is you're yes, you're adding value. And also it's not about you. Oh yeah. Right. It's yeah. about how you're serving your audience. And if yeah. mom happens to be sitting in the audience, I do love <laughs> that. I have had that experience ask her where I did not adjust my material to people that I knew. <laughs> you're better than me. That I didn't care. And, and I should have cared because then I had to apologize later because I did offend. And there's a, here's the thing that I also feel that you're not always going to please everybody. Not everybody yeah. is going to like you. It's different if you have a personal relationship with them. Yes, I hear mm -hmm. that. Um, and however, I always say that if people don't quite groove with you, they're going to probably be talking about that. So at least you got them thinking about something, Ooh, yeah. right? Because they're I, probably I, talking about their opposing point of view with another person after the fact. Yeah. I mean, it's the goal is not to please everyone yeah. because if you're trying to please everyone, you're not going to please anyone. It's much better <laughs> to, you know, have 50% raving fans and then 50% like, Hey man, this was the worst ever because <laughs> those 50% are going to go down and buy and they're going to make a change in their life. If you make it like a great kind of slightly boring speech where everyone's, eh, it's kind of okay. You know, are they going to make a change? Are they going to buy from you? Uh, probably not. Right. We, we want to have that deep impact. Yeah. And then you need to have, you know, some strong opinions on certain things. Yeah, strong point of view. So, okay, I have another question for you. Um, I, have, I know, look at me getting <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, So my other question for you is, what is one tactic that you can give the people watching right now uh, to help them focus that point of view when they are up on stage that might help manage those nerves a little bit because you mentioned you can't appeal to everyone mm. right so yeah. what is it that we can do when we're putting together our presentation and we're rehearsing and practicing that presentation who are we talking to how can we manage the nerves in that way is it is you know sometimes and i think it, it depends on for example on this LinkedIn live, I'm talking yeah. to the two of you. If I was giving a mm -hmm. webinar, I would maybe pick one person that I'm talking to, right? Because I can't change the minds of a sea of humans. Um, mm -hmm. But when you're up on stage, what's your advice there? Do you pick one person that you're giving that that talk to that's a very specific kind of avatar type person? Or are you, how, how do you manage that? Because I know that yeah. focus can also help with the nerves and that fear. 
Yeah, you need to obviously before you talk, you need to think about who are you talking to. Let's say it's mm -hmm. a room with a hundred people. Maybe you are really talking to the decision makers. Sure, you're going to address everybody, so it's kind of that. But once you prepare your material, you want to have arguments that probably appeal more to them. So mm. you want to think about who am I talking to? When I did my PhD defense, uh, you know, there were probably 20 people that came. I wasn't talking to my mom, even though she was there. I was talking to the three people that were going to judge whether I would pass or not. Those are the only three people, all right. of the other people. So that's very specific, those people. But in your talk, there are also going to be other people. And I've noticed this myself. Sometimes if I go out and give a free, you know, set of half an hour talk or an hour, there are going to be people that is not in my target audience. So probably that speech or presentation didn't appeal so much to them. So whereas if you're doing a webinar, probably it's people that somehow are your avatar. So think about who are you really talking to? And then for me, it's a mindset thinking about, okay, I am providing value. Maybe you have talked to some people in that group before. If you go to a company, you can also send out a short survey, you know, not something that's too long mm. because they're busy, but something that takes you know, two to four minutes with a couple of questions. And then it seems tailored for them. And when you're on stage, you know that they have that problem because you mm -hmm. can also mention it. I, a lot of you mentioned this and this. You talk, talk to the organizer, think what their challenges are. So having that in the back of your mind when you're on stage, like, hey, you know, the, the people told me they have this problem. That helps me. Uh, another thing which you probably know a lot more about is breathing techniques mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. fastest way really to get in a state is through breathing. You know, if yeah. you're walking on the road and you happen to see a snake, your breathing is going to change that fast. Boom. Right. You instantly change everything. You, go you get like in that this. fight so, or flight mode, right? The blood's yeah, rushing to the back totally, of your head and you start totally. your breath gets shallow. So mm, it's. Yeah. It's, so, yeah, go ahead. No, no, um, no. I'm just. No, I, it, so I just have a, a routine where, you know, I do some breathing exercises, try to you know, open up and, and do some slow exhales. It's actually through our exhale, we, we relax. And in the mm -hmm. inhale, we get stressed. Of course, you need to inhale as well. Mm -hmm. But you want to have a longer exhale and hold your breath a little bit. And then I open my arms. So I kind of open my body, you know, because... Do the Amy you, Cuddy? Yeah, I do the, that's a power pose. That's, that's powerful, <laughs> you know, it, it works. And I do it with the participants too, because they, they love it, you know. And then I have them do their, put their arms up. And like to get a little bit of exercise and everybody starts feeling good and we get a laugh. Uh, so think about your breathing. Mm -hmm. That is awesome way to do it. And also if you have a break, let's say you're doing a two hour session with an hour in between. I used to always go and chat with the participants because, you know, do a little bit of connection with them. I was like, you know, I'll still do that a little bit, but I also go have my own time now. Yeah. Go do my breathing, get centered and, and get ready for next session. So I'm like optimal state again so think about yourself to to really prepare your own state that's going to make a massive difference know you provide value get in state feel good and you're going to be awesome and if they happen not to like your gift because you are sharing a gift <laughs> yeah. and it's their choice whether they want to take it or not then be okay with that mm -hmm. you know some people aren't ready for the gift and that's okay Mm, I appreciate you sharing that. I love that. Like yeah. you're, you're getting them. Yeah. They don't need to receive it and that's okay. Yeah. Some people aren't ready for yeah. some certain training. Mm -hmm. You know, the mentor will show up when they're ready. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced this in my own life. You know, there are still things where you, where, yeah, where I experience it. Yeah. Beautiful. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Um, Carol, did you have something else you're going to ask? Oh, I was going to ask as far as being, open and uh true to how you're feeling do you does it ruin your credibility if you are getting up in front of a huge audience to speak and you tell them like i'm super nervous so sorry if i make some mistakes or say something wrong or i, I wouldn't do that uh, okay. it's kind of like a little child asking you know i did something wrong please like me uh, okay you know yeah that's how i see it you go do your thing and do your best okay that's okay you know, if you're going to say that, it's a maximum one. But don't try to seek uh, the, the what, what's the English word? You know, that, oh, you, you the, like me, please like me. Right. You know, that is not attractive. Okay. They was, see you're nervous is okay. Right. Yes. That's okay. 
Yeah. Because they will be there with you the whole time. People yeah. want to see you succeed. I always think yeah. of it as like hosting a party, right? When you open the door mm. and you're the host and you own it yeah. and you've taken the time to prepare this amazing meal and some apps and you got the music playing, you've handed <laughs> someone a cocktail, like you own that, right? Like right. if you open the door and someone walks in and you're like, oh, I'm sorry, all I've got is like Right. You know, brie and I didn't get the crackers that I wanted and yeah. uh, they were I burned the, the water. I burned the dinner. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I burned the dinner. Like you figure out how to improvise in that moment, right? You order the takeout if you burn the right. dinner. Because it's really all about the guests. It's about right. making the guests feel good. And I think that I love that analogy. It was just like you're the host of the party. Mm. Right? I like yeah, so totally, being the host. Totally. That, Own that's it. a great, uh, great uh, analogy. You're sharing there. I do really like that yeah. being the host of your presentation, yeah. like. And uh, yeah, once the game is on, you know the game's on, and you and you do your very best. That, yeah. That's how it is. You don't need to hide it as such. I think. No. But you don't need to really just tell them up their face. Because people can tell when you're nervous yeah. and they can, and because there's, the, there's this physiological thing too, that happens mm. to our bodies, right? When we're not using our breath, right? Sometimes we get the dry mouth. I mean, I remember <laughs> there was one time I was on stage and I had to deliver this long monologue and I, it was an intense thing. And my lips were literally stuck <laughs> on my teeth, <laughs> like literally stuck on oh my, my teeth for like yeah. a good five minutes. And the audience was like, it was a black box theater where as mm. close to me as my laptop is right now. And all I could think about was like, I can't stop and apologize for the fact that my, no. my lips are stuck to my teeth. Right. They can see that <laughs> shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just wow, gotta, man. I gotta plow through, yeah. you know? Yeah. You got to yeah, commit true. 100%. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. That right? is so true. So I'm curious, Asker. So you mm. had a career before you became a public speaking coach. Yeah. And so I'm wondering if you can share with people, because I love to hear people's stories of like yeah, how sure. they go from one thing into the next. Um, what got you into being a coach? And I know you have such a following in LinkedIn and you're so mm. treasured by so many people. And nice. I would love to hear your story. Yeah. So my story was probably, uh, if you go way back uh, in my upbringing, uh, my dad wasn't the person that would, you know, tell you, tell me a lot. I love you. You're amazing. All those sort of things. So I was trying to get approval by being good at certain things. And one thing he cared a lot about was school, mathematics, uh, chemistry, uh, physics, those sort of classes to him was the best. So I think subconsciously, without being really aware of this, I was trying to please him. So that I think that's why I went the route of studying engineering and doing decently well there. It wasn't never my real true passion. I thought it was nice. I kind of enjoyed it when I was studying. But I remember my first day at work, I had I was working in this oil and gas company. And already after an hour, I was like, this is so incredibly boring. <laughs> after an hour and you studied five years. And I'm thinking, is this really it? I studied five years to look into an Excel spreadsheet, move some numbers around. <sighs> Terrible. And um, I didn't know what to do. So I, I hung around. My friend said, you know, wait, you're going to grow, get up uh, further on the ladder. You're going to do more interesting projects. It never got interesting. You know, <laughs> There was a day or two maybe that was good. But in four years, having 10 days is not enough. Nice. And then I decided because a lot of my friends were doing a PhD at the university. I thought, you know, uni was OK. Maybe I could do some research and, you know, really nerd down on the topics. And then I did that and I discovered this was even worse for me because I'm quite extroverted. I like to be with people. And then I discovered it's not really the job. It's also a big part of me is being with people, yeah. you know, connecting that energy. A lot of people like to be by themselves, geek around and nerd around. That's cool. No problem. But it wasn't for me. I like to spend my day probably half of the time with people, the other half of the time reflecting, studying, those sort of things. But if you're 90% studying, that that didn't work for me. But I finished my degree. And I think during that time, I discovered really teaching was fun. It's part of the doing a PhD training is you've got to teach. And then I stumble across uh, a club called Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. And then I went and, you know, did speeches there. I thought it was really interesting to give speeches, but, you know, I had a mindset, hey, I'm just asking her. Nobody wants to hear me. <laughs> I'm not particularly well-spoken. Um, I can stand up. I can get up and be fairly confident, but, you know, I'm not really motivating anybody. But then one day I was sitting at home 
in my um, sofa after work and I was on Facebook. And then one of my acquaintances, he posted, do you want to be a professional speaker? You know, this is my big dream. You know, I want to be on stage, inspire people, help people. But, and then she said, write a comment if that's you. Now, I didn't dare to share a comment because then other people could see that was my dream. <laughs> so I didn't dare to admit this is my dream. Yeah. But I had enough guts to press the like button. So <laughs> I pressed the like button. And even though she was just an acquaintance and I could see loads of people had written on her post and I knew she was working somehow with professional speakers, not really how. So I knew she was not fooling around with this thing. But then she wrote me, hey, ask her, I happen to have two tickets for a seminar with a professional speaker. That's awesome. I'm working with him. It's a thousand dollars, but you can get it for free. Do you want to come? It's a three day seminar. I was like, yeah, hell yeah. You know, I want to come, of course. And that seminar changed my life. Mm. I got there. And once I left after the seminar, I left with a feeling this skill is something everybody can learn. I can learn this too. I got to put in the work. I got to learn the skills. I got to get the training and put in the time, but it's a learnable skill, even for somebody like me. And um, <laughs> ever since then, I've had that feeling. It's learnable. Go out there, find the methods. Sometimes we hit a wall. Then you study some more, find a coach, get help, keep pushing through. And uh, this is the way to go. It's a little bit like a game. You got to try different things. And I think that's when I'm thinking about it now, the strongest thing we can give as speakers is leaving people with a feeling. Of course, I do remember a few of his techniques and training points, but it's really that feeling that has stayed with me that keeps me uh, even mm. today plowing through. Yeah. Oh, well, so it's that's a little bit of my story. And then I love to... it. I love <laughs> it. Well, you know, I have that podcast, Are You Waiting for Permission? And I love this story because I feel like it, it really taps into that. You yeah. gave yourself permission to A, like something and it felt scary to you to be exposed in that way, right? Because you had yeah. this other identity going on. Yeah, yeah. And then the second thing is that when someone offered you something, you didn't you, you said yes to it and you yeah. move and it, it, it inspired you to continue moving forward. And so if anything, I would encourage people to do is what you've already said. And I'm just going to say it again, because I think it's so important is that you have to take these, these just little baby steps into overcoming fear, right? And yeah. or resistance or even the unknown, because sometimes these things can feel really big and really daunting and overwhelming. But if we just take these little steps and send whatever energy we need to out into the universe, uh, it will reveal itself as it did to you. Yeah, you hit on a very important thing, uh, which I also uh, suffer from sometimes, and I think pretty much everyone does, which is just said, step into the unknown. We, we would love to be able to see the whole path. But if you're starting out as a really nervous speaker, it's impossible to know every single step to hitting the stage with 10,000 people. Yeah. You have you just look, you know, what are the next two, three steps? And then once you get there, you might be able to see the next two, three steps. So really just get better mm -hmm. and the past will reveal itself. And if it doesn't, the best thing is really just get a coach. You know, yeah. you see how fast when you're having your clients and you're having your program, how quickly people can progress. You know, having somebody say, do this is the best way to really get good at something quickly. Plus, people get it done. That's the half. Half of the training yeah. is really just having, I'm holding your hand. Do that. Yeah, you have, you, know, you paid me to be simple. your accountability person. Yeah. Now, chop, chop. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, they need the advice. That's why they come. But, right. you know, they also need that holding hand. I think we yeah. all do a little bit. Yeah, we do. Yeah. I think it's so important to have that group of people that, uh, whether that be a coach or other colleagues yeah. that really can lift you up and, and help hold you accountable. And um, the only way that's going to happen is if you ask. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You got to ask for the help. And uh, there's nothing wrong that you're not an amazing speaker. You can become one. Yeah, it's you possible. totally can. Yes, you can. it is. It is. And, uh, it's funny, you know, if you go back and look at amazing speakers, you can go back and look like Gary Vaynerchuk, for instance. If you go way back and see his first videos, you'd be like, the guy's average. You know, he didn't suck, but he was average. Like, hey, this could be anybody. But the guy put in the time 
And today, you know, he is putting on a show. When yes, he's on he stage, is. Right? <laughs> he and, really you know, is. He started the same place as many of us. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he's advanced re- very well. So I think it's nice to go back and look if it's possible to those people that have reached a really, really high level. And this is the thing when you hear, I'm sure you, you experience this too, when, when you interview people on your podcast, most of the people, they weren't very good when they started. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's about the process. We don't. And I think, yeah, I think that that's, I, and we've said process a few times, but I do think it's an important thing to talk about because we're, because in the era of social media and because we just kind of see the end, we don't really see the process from when someone started to where they are now, we kind of just get witness to the end result. And so we think that they just have always been that way. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Or but they post not... that video and be like, oh, they didn't know they had 50 takes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? right. You post that video and they're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's like day four of trying to shoot the same oh, cool. like two minute <laughs> yeah. video. Like, yeah. right. We just yeah. don't, we don't get that behind the scenes. No. And so it's the, I think we fall into the comparison trap. Yeah. And so I would just invite people watching right now or listening is just like, don't fall into that comparison trap. Um, use, utilize coaches like Asker, like myself, Mm. utilize Mm. people like Carol who can really help you with your design so that you're not sweating over that piece of it. Because I do think that if you are another aspect to a great presentation is your design. If you choose to use a presentation, PowerPoint or keynote. Um, so why sweat over that? Why not feel confident about that component to it as well, right? And so yeah. I think there's a lot of things that we can think about big picture to really help boost ourselves and to help us feel more confident as as speakers. And uh, you touch on an important thing, you know, one thing is being good on stage, being able to have a great product as such. But what a lot of, and I also struggle with this, a lot of newbies tend to focus only on having a good product. Yeah. but someone like Carol can help you make a great brochure, a one pager, those sort of things that get you paid gigs. And if you get paid, you get to put more resources into getting better. And personally, I spend way too much time in the beginning because of my own lack of confidence and, you know, Hey, you got to like me, you know, that (laughs) kind of thing when I hit the stage rather than just, Hey, you got to hunt down the money as well. Yeah. Being okay. I'm at this level right now. Let me try to get, some paid gigs, because if you bring in cash, you can then accelerate more. So having someone like Carol, other people to help you with the business side is incredibly important. So don't just focus on your speaking skills because it's like, you know, um, you got to have everything, a little bit of everything. Well, and Um, you are your own brand, right? Oh, totally. Totally. (laughs) And then what I've noticed, I have a guy doing my homepage at the moment. Probably I could do a little bit of it myself, but I also save energy. You know, we only have a certain amount of energy during our day. And I want to spend it on the thing I love the most rather than some things like, oh, this is a click here and that sort of things. So, you know, outsourcing it to Carol or someone else, you know, you're going to save time and just get back a good product, yep. something you can use. Hey, man, it's awesome. Yeah. And I so, and I want to say this, too, like because I think a lot of people get really confused about the whole branding thing. Like you can send your ideas to Carol. She can make you an awesome logo and then you can plop yeah. that stuff into Canva. Right. Exactly. Like, like, <laughs> yeah. Then Canva. And then Canva. Just I've just got to give you some snaps. Then Canva. Exactly. You then Canva. Okay. <laughs> um, Asker, I just want to say that I have so appreciated this conversation, and I've appreciated you taking time out of the day to have this conversation to share a little bit of your story with us. And um, what is the best way where people can get a hold of you? The best way to get a hold of me is probably through my LinkedIn. You know, okay. just uh, send me a direct message there. Otherwise, if they want to check out a lot of my material, they can go to my homepage, Asker Linholt. So that's just my name, as you can see it here, .com. Mm-hmm. Uh, there have got loads of videos and sort of stuff uh, I do. But otherwise, LinkedIn, to have a conversation. And I put up regular videos every week uh, with content, some tips. And I always answer everybody that writes a comment because I want to learn from them as well and engage with them and, and give some value back. So uh, head over to my LinkedIn and join the talk. I love it. Yes, yes definitely. This has been great. Thank you so much. Well, Carol, before you, you can't you can't say goodbye without you telling oh. people where to find you. No, we got to hear where's the marketing You can find Google. me at uh, carolbanksdesign.com. Very easy. 
Amazing. <laughs> and I will put these resources in the comments so that people can easily find you. And uh, I'm Meredith Grundy with Meredith Grundy Coaching. And I also have group coaching called Confidently Speaking dot club. And uh, I'm always delighted to meet new folks like Asger and to collaborate with Carol. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I've got an hour left. So, uh, too. Amazing. So, anyway, yeah, you guys enjoy your day too. It was a real pleasure. Real pleasure. Thank you.